Hello, I am so delighted to be sharing a sneak peek into two of the Clyde the Hippo series. Uh, they're for three to five year olds and they are absolutely adorable. Uh, they're written and illustrated by Keith Morantz and Larissa Morantz, who I was lucky enough to have in at least one of our courses and they're just beautiful people. So we start off and we see that he's a purple hippo, so he's pretty adorable. Butterflies appear in the story, and so she's uh, Larissa is sh showing them in a jar here and all all over the cover, and just the sheer joy in Clyde is adorable. So here we go, the half title. Woo! And then the full title that's got the credits on this side. And then here she's got the um, dedications and being a married couple, it made it easy. <laughs> they just dedicated it to their kids. Oh, this is Clyde. He's kind to everyone and everything, even rocks. So he's clearly an eccentric character. Clyde spends his time playing with his chemistry set, measuring furniture, worrying, and watching his favourite TV show, The Super Sloths. When he's outside, Clyde likes exploring his backyard with his trusty stuffed sidekick, Awesome. They especially love watching butterflies in the garden. So very, you know, the language is geared for very young children. On the surface, it's very simple, but it's just adorable. But Clyde won't have time to explore today. Today is his first day of school. Clyde wonders why his mother would do this to him since he already has so much fun at home. So look at Clyde. And so Clyde is, you know, it's already mentioned that he spends his time worrying that he's an anxious creature. And, and then they set it up with what's to come. I think we should turn around, Clyde says, when they reach the front gate. Orson and I would like to go home. Clyde, you just have butterflies in your stomach, his mum replies. Butterflies? Mom, I would never eat butterflies. You know that, Clyde says. His mum smiles. That's just an expression. It means you're nervous. Oh, Clyde scowls. You're going to have to have it. You're going to have a great time, his mom says. Just think of all the exciting things you'll get to do here. Clyde shuts his eyes and tries to imagine what school will be like. And then here we go. Here he's imagining disasters. And I'm not going to show any more because I want you to buy this book. Uh, it's like it's like worst case scenarios. And part of what makes these books so great is that they're easily identifiable with. Um, because we all get anxious and we all imagine worst case scenarios. And they're just so darling Clyde the hippo Clyde likes to slide and then here the dedication to their kids again this is Clyde and I'm not sure which one was first in the series Clyde likes to slide so that's just beautiful language we've got both Oh, is it? No, we've got uh, assonance and yeah, we've got both assonance and consonance and rhyme. Clyde and slide, likes and slide and Clyde again. I mean, it's really just a it's social four words. Clyde likes to slide. It's just such a lovely sentence. This is his first time on a slide at the park. 
it is definitely not like the small one in his backyard and negatives can be so wonderful in kids books because kids are always hearing negatives no don't do that not now no 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 <laughs> so whenever you can use it in a kids book it's a, it's a wonderful thing Clyde isn't sure if he's ready for this neither is his stuffed friend Orson it seems a little too high up Orson agrees. Clyde wishes he had prepared for this. And so he's got oven mitts, umpire's vest, bubble wrap, knee pads, helmet, goggles. He shuts his eyes tight and imagine what could happen. What if the slide is too hot or too sandy? What if he goes down so fast he blasts into space like a rocket and ends up on another planet? Just gorgeous writing and gorgeous illustration. And what if he goes down so slowly it's dark when he reaches the bottom and everyone has gone home? I mean, wow. Clyde clearly has a great imagination, which most kids do and so usually we have a rule of threes but here it's he's just such an imaginative little hippo um and it just goes on and on and on with all the disasters until clyde opens his eyes and decides he doesn't want to go down the slide after all he turns around and sees his friend toby also awaiting possible doom I don't want to go down, Clyde says. What if, what if, what if, what if what, Toby asks. And um, so this must be the second book because we met those other characters in um, Clyde Goes to School. And I'm not going to read any more. I'll, I'll just show you one. <laughs> and it's just. I love I love both of these I was really sad when I finished reading them because I felt like they were friends these characters uh, I hope you guys get a chance to buy these books or read them at the library especially if you've got young kids perfect for preschoolers um, and even kindergarten so that's it congratulations Keith and Larissa I'm so delighted that you guys are doing so well and they've got a graphic novel coming out and Larissa's doing another picture book so it's just wonderful to sort of bask in my students <laughs> successes okay bye for now